When Hyundai Veloster burst onto the scene in 2011, it was a fun and funky entrant in its class, but the turbo model didn't exactly set our hearts on fire like some of its rivals. Now though, we've got the second generation Veloster, and I'm eager to find out whether this turbo R-Spec model has more punch. At first glance, the new Veloster doesn't look all that different, but the design is crisper and more mature than before. It's also a little longer and a little wider, with a bit more headroom for rear seat passengers. But don't worry, the Veloster is still slightly unconventional. Two doors on the passenger side and just one on the driver's side, plus a center exit exhaust. I really like the way this car looks, both outside and in, aside from the fake plastic vents on the rear fascia. Given that this is the turbo model, let's start by talking about its turbocharged engine. It's a 1.6 liter with 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque, and it scurries along quite nicely. The turbo comes on early and easily, so it always feels like this car has plenty of power. Now, in terms of outright horsepower, that's down a little bit compared to rivals like a Volkswagen GTI, Ford Focus ST, or a Honda Civic Si. But the Veloster has so much torque and such quick throttle response that it feels just as quick as those cars out on the road. It doesn't, however, sound all that exciting all the time. There's this artificial sound generator system which lets you pick how much engine noise you want. Personally, I don't really like using the speakers to make a sporty car sound sporty, but the upshot is that this car can be really quiet when you're just commuting in it, and then you can get a little more audible excitement when you're driving it more enthusiastically. This six-speed manual transmission has a linkage developed in partnership with aftermarket company B&M. And not only does it have these incredibly short throws, but it's also got this wonderful Goldilocks balance between everyday ease of use and nice satisfying mechanical heft. Couple that with the lovely positive clutch feel and rowing your way through the gears is really satisfying. It also goes around corners quite well thanks to the upgraded suspension compared to the base Veloster. Turning is quick and this is a fun car to flick through bends. There's a lot of grip too, because the 18-inch wheels are shot in Michelin Pilot Sport 4 summer tires. One caveat though, if you get the optional 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, you won't get those sticky tires. The Veloster Turbo is a competent daily driver too. Ride quality is compliant, except for over the biggest bumps like expansion joints. It's reasonably fuel efficient, rated for 26 miles per gallon city and 33 mpg highway with this manual transmission. And although there's some wind noise when you're at interstate speeds, overall the cabin is pretty quiet. Being a hatchback, you can also fit a lot of cargo in the back of the Veloster, especially because you can fold down the rear seats for even more space. But just as with the last Veloster, the styling means that there's a kind of high liftover height for that trunk, which can make moving bulky, heavy things in and out a little bit of a chore. This R-Spec model is the most affordable version of the Veloster Turbo, but it's still got a really nice complement of standard equipment. Things like push-button start, LED headlights, pre-collision braking, and lane keep assist. This 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system is excellent, and it supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. For a more detailed rundown of all the tech in this car, be sure to look for our video at theroadshow.com. Still, the Veloster isn't without its letdowns. Having the coupe-style door on the driver's side means I've got a bigger blind spot over my shoulder, and come on, no one looks at this and is fooled into thinking that it's a coupe. The brakes work pretty well, but the soft pedal feel is a little uninspiring for a sporty car, and there really isn't any steering feel at all through this wheel. The Veloster Turbo comes in three different trim levels. This R-Spec model comes only with a six-speed manual transmission and is just under $24,000. Then there's a version with a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission for about $26,000. And finally, the loaded-up Turbo Ultimate costs $27,500 to $29,000 depending on which of the transmissions you get. Of the three though, I still think I would go for this R-Spec model. It's just such good value considering how much car you get. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not saying you should only buy the Hyundai Velosta Turbo because it's good value for money. It is genuinely a ton of fun to drive, yet it's still mature enough that you'd be happy using it as your daily driver. For those reasons, I'm really impressed with the new Veloster.